Belts in motion, moving raw material and finished goods quickly and efficiently. The conveyor belt is the lifeline, the main link to industrial production. But a conveyor belt is only as good as the system it performs on. Properly loaded, well tracked, and operating on properly serviced idlers and pulleys, a conveyor belt will deliver a long, productive service life. A conveyor belt that tracks properly should be the ultimate goal for the conveyor user. To achieve proper tracking, certain practices are crucial. This program will focus on basic procedures that will help ensure proper belt tracking. The first segment will concentrate on the general mechanics involved in the tracking of all conveyor belts. The second segment will focus on tracking issues for lightweight belts meaning belts with a designed maximum operating tension of less than 160 pounds per inch of width. The third segment will focus on tracking issues for heavyweight belts, meaning belts with designed operating tensions equal to or greater than 160 pounds per inch of width. For more detailed information on belt tracking, consult the NIBA Technical Handbook. Tracking is defined as the procedure required to make the conveyor belt run true when empty and also when fully loaded. This is also referred to as training. Conveyors which do not track properly cause material spillage, component failure, higher maintenance costs, costly damage to the conveyor belt itself, and possibly a total shutdown of the system. When a conveyor belt is installed, problems of design, manufacture, erection, poor workmanship, and normal tolerances become apparent. All too often, these problems are considered belt problems. The belt may well be at fault. Belt conditions that contribute to mistracking include belt camber, skew or bow, too low belt tension, failure to properly square the belt ends, poor installation of mechanical fasteners, or an improperly executed belt splice or vulcanization. However, a mistracking belt is more likely reacting to a structural defect or maladjustment in the system. Therefore, the problem of tracking should be approached as much from a system's point of view. One fundamental condition must exist for a conveyor belt to track properly. This condition is a square conveyor system. The support structure, pulleys, snub rollers, carrying idlers, and return idlers must all be square with the frame and parallel to each other. Another very important aspect for proper tracking is the possibility of material buildup. Excessive material buildup on rollers will cause tracking problems to develop. The cleanliness of the system is therefore critical for good tracking to take place. Tracking the belt is a process of adjusting idlers, pulleys, and loading conditions in a manner that will correct any tendencies of the belt to run other than true. A normal sequence for belt training is to start with an empty belt and begin with the return run working toward the tail pulley, followed with the top run in the direction of belt travel. Tracking adjustment is done while the belt is running and is concentrated over a length of the conveyor preceding the region of trouble. The priority should be given to adjusting idlers first, followed by adjustment of pulleys and snub rollers. There is one basic rule to remember when training a belt. The belt moves toward that end of the roller or idler it contacts first. Training a belt by adjusting one or more idlers is like using the handlebars to steer a bicycle. Looking down the direction of belt travel, when you shift an idler as you would the handlebars, the belt will move in the same direction as the bike would. The adjustment may not be immediately apparent, so permit the belt to run for several minutes. For longer belts, wait at least three full belt revolutions after each idler adjustment. Then determine if additional tracking is required. If the belt runs to one side at a particular point or points on the conveyor structure, there are three probable causes. The alignment or leveling of the structure, the idlers or pulleys immediately preceding that particular area, or a combination of these factors. 
If a section or sections of the belt run off at all points along the conveyor, the cause is possibly in the belt itself. The belt ends may not have been squared properly, or off-center loading may affect the tracking. After the empty belt tracking is completed, run the belt with a full load and recheck the tracking. Ideally, loading should be done in the center of the belt. Some conveyor systems incorporate equipment or arrangements to limit, correct, or forestall mistracking. The most widely used automatic tracking devices are movable guide arrangements. These include vertical rolls, flanges, or tracks used as guides. They are normally used with low belt tension applications. Other devices try to detect mistracking when it occurs and then take corrective action. A variety of designs include optical, electrical, hydraulic, or pneumatic sensing devices to control actuators that tilt a roller. These arrangements are expensive to install and maintain. All the automatic tracking devices work under the handicap of being after-the-fact arrangements. Some preset amount of mistracking must occur before any limiting or correcting action is begun. One very popular solution to mistracking is solved by the crowned pulley. Crowned pulleys are effective when used with low tension and very short conveyor systems, restricting their use to lightweight belts only. Heavyweight belts generally operate with a troughed roller arrangement. These belts utilize high-tension fabric and or steel cord construction. The use of crown pulley arrangements can cause damage to high-tension belts and are therefore not recommended. Crown pulley arrangements will be examined in Section 2 of Belt Tracking, Tracking Lightweight Belts. Lightweight and heavyweight conveyor belts share many similar characteristics when it comes to belt installation and tracking. However, some factors are restricted to lightweight belting. One such factor is the pulley crown. A pulley crown features a larger diameter at the center than at the ends. The effect of this design is to direct the belt to the center of the pulley, thus acting as a tracking device. Crowns are most effective in applications where there is a long span approaching the pulley. Head pulleys, tail pulleys, and take-up pulleys are best suited for crowns. The larger the pulleys and the higher the belt wrap, the more effective the pulley crown. There are three general types of pulley crowns. The radial crown is suitable for lightweight rubber and PVC belting, as well as European-style monofilament belts having a width of 8 inches or less. Trapezoidal pulley crowns are best suited for European-style monofilament belts over 8 inches in width. Apex, or hip crowns, put unnecessary stress on the center of any belt, contributing to shorter belt life. This crown design should be avoided. Recommendations for crown geometry differ slightly between belt manufacturers. For more information, consult the pulley and belt manufacturers. Another important factor that is specific to lightweight belting, particularly European monofilament belts, is proper belt tension. To get proper tension, a very simple method is used. First, determine the correct amount of tension. In this example, we want to achieve 0.6% belt tension. With the belt installed and without any tension, make two marks on each edge of the belt a measured distance apart. In this case, 40 inches apart. Slowly and evenly start tensioning the belt until the marks have moved or stretched apart to the predetermined amount of tension. In this case, when the marks have stretched to 40.24 inches, the entire belt has 0.6% tension on it. Heavyweight belt applications present certain training needs that are not found in lightweight applications. One such need is the training aid. Training aids such as self-aligning idlers, edge guides, and limit switches act as a form of insurance against severe training problems that go undetected. These training aids are temporary because they affect basic training problems that should be corrected immediately. The vertical edge guide is a popular training aid 
that places spools or rollers a few inches from the belt edge. Rather than prevent belt wander, they perform a damage control function, allowing the belt to strike a rolling surface rather than a fixed surface. The guides tend to wear off the belt edge and cause ply separation. Therefore, persistent contact is undesirable, and the source of the problem should be located. Another important training aspect for heavyweight belts is the return idler. Usually, the troughing idlers on the carrying side exert a natural training influence and are generally sufficient to maintain belt position. The return side presents the most serious condition for belt damage due to its confined position within the structure. Of the different types of return idlers, only the V return idler exerts a positive training influence on the belt. This idler offers constant belt contact and is highly recommended on conveyors over 500 feet in length. The other return idler types, flat and flat disc, offer no training influence but are acceptable with additional training idlers as needed. The spaced disc idlers should have six to eight inches of solid ends. This is necessary to prevent trapping the belt edge between the discs. Another factor common to heavyweight belts is material buildup. Excessive material accumulation on idlers and pulleys will simulate components that are out of alignment and actually act like a crowned pulley. The belt will try to center itself over this crown, causing belt wander. Buildup also causes unequal tensions across the belt width and is detrimental to belt life. Special care must be exercised to keep return rolls, snubs, and other pulleys clean. An effective multiple cleaner belt cleaning system should be installed to prevent material carryback. If necessary, belt cleaners can be installed directly on the snub and other pulleys. For more information on tracking issues specific to both lightweight and heavyweight belts and troubleshooting issues, consult the NIBA handbook. As the cost of conveyor belts increases, the need for proper belt tracking becomes crucial. A belt that is properly installed and centered will deliver high performance and a long life to any application. Belt tracking, a key to productivity, a key to keeping your belt in motion.